so what python is all about uh, as i just say like you know the python is not just the programming language python is not just a scripting language so then what it is so let me tell you the detailed definition of the python first because that is something where we are learning first so first we should know what is exactly python is all about so python is very very high level uh, scripting language so when i say very very high level means what it is something where you can say uh, where you simply write an english level language like you just say hi hi uh, like uh, print hi and then the the response comes to you so you don't require to you know tell the machine level uh, code here so let me tell you what exactly is the python here the python is a general purpose language so what is general purpose means quickly so general purpose is something the language you can use it for multi purpose right like i can use the language for database i can use for the web programming i can use for testing i can use for the multi threading so whatever the uh, task you want to perform or any kind of automation for all that thing you can use the python now the second question comes to mind that the it is a interpreted language now what is interpreted means now when you say interpreted means you are uh, here in this case python language the execution happen line by line so uh, in other language like in a case of the c c++ and java it's a compiler based language so in that case what happen you need to write a, a multiple lines of code and you have to main program and compile it and then execute it but that's not the case in the python so here you write one line you execute it so line by line execution happen in the interpreted language next thing is python is not simple object or uh, it's not just programming language it is not just a, a scripting language it is not just it is even not just object or the programming language it is something beyond that and that is it is object oriented scripting language so the question comes to my in like what is object oriented scripting language means so what is object oriented scripting language here is is here that the language is something where everything is object here so when i say everything is object so what does it mean here everything object means here whatever the data you see whether it is an integer whether it is a float whether it is a string all are considered as an object so uh, uh, now when when you say everything is an object here it means like the question comes to mind like whether the class is object in the python the answer is yes class is also object so uh, let me give a fit here like general purpose i say like it's like you can perform any task then what are other languages the question comes another question comes like do we have another types of language like uh, other than general purpose answer is yes we have domain specific language so domain specific means something like where your database language like sql web language like html like that there are other languages are also available like data science language like r language but whereas in the case of java or c c++ or other languages they are all for multi purpose i hope you are clear with the what is general purpose and what is domain specific means i also discuss about what is interpreter and what is compiler language means the third point about python the python is a very interactive language and at the benefit is like you know you don't require to worry about writing a multiple lines of code you simply write and get the interactive shell there's an interactive shell and then get the immediate response so that's why the python is interactive you can also try on the python shell already in my previous workshop i have shown you like how does the python work here now object oriented scripting language specifically those who are not aware about the what is object and what is class let me tell you when you say object oriented means first thing is like here we need to understand what is class here and what is object so class is a blueprint whereas object is a real thing what you see is a object here what what you see as a design design is a class here so let, let us say you have a, a building architecture that is what it comes as a class whereas a real building is a is a uh, is a object itself so same way here there is a class there is a design of the car is a class here Where, uh, where uh, we also call it a blueprint, whereas the real car, what you see as a maybe a auto car or maybe wagon or or whatever the car is there, that is the object here. Next point here, the Python is a high level. So some of the participants they are asking like, what is exactly high level means? So let me tell you, high level language is specifically created for programmer. Now programmer they don't want to write a, a machine level language. They don't want to understand the machine here. They are not more interested to understand the computer or hardware part. but they would like to uh, do the business part so you are more focusing on business application you are focusing on more on the what is the task you want to do it but not interested in the machine level like in the case of you are interested in driving the car but you are not interested in a engine how the engine is created and all these things so in that case you want to make it easy 
it is a high level. So you write your own English language, and that's what the Python is here now. Uh, whereas other languages, like previously, were in the assembly language, uh, all those were the low-layer language. Whereas in between, there were middle-layer language, like C, C++, I consider as the middle-layer language, because here, you need to little, have a little bit of understanding of the machine also. There, we need to understand like how do you allocate the memory and deallocate memory and so on. Now, next thing is, what is the difference between programming language and the scripting language? So the question here is like most of you guys have in the background of Java and you want to know like what is exactly the difference between Java and the Python. So let me tell you here, Java is an object-oriented programming language. And most of you guys, most of those who are from the IT here, they will be knowing like you need to write multiple lines of code in the Java. Even for simple hello world, at least you need to write a six to seven lines of code. You need to compile it and then execute it. And if for the newcomer, it's a bit difficult to write and understand the syntax in the case of Java. But if you are uh, uh, in the case of Python, as the scripting language, where you just write one line and you get the execution, it is simply write one print hello world. That's what you are expecting. What is you are expecting? You just uh, type it in the print statement and you get the immediate response. So this is a big difference what you can see between the compiler-based language like Java and the interpreted language like a Python. So one more question I'd like to tell you, like, what is the difference between scripting language and programming language? Now, imagine there is a, uh, there is a file handling program. I need to write a program where you are copying the file from source path to destination path. Now, if you want to uh, copy the file from source path to destination path, what you will do? And it is a program, uh, let, let's say in the C, C++, Java, any program is a key you will write a complete file handling program. And there will be almost 10 to 15 lines of code now. Now this 10 to 15 lines are where you will take the input from the keyboard, and then you will have to take argument and all, and then copy and so, uh, paste. That is what happened in the case of the file handling program. But in the shell scripting, what you do, you simply say CP, source path, and destination path. So now that is a command you are typing. So that command is a script now here. So here in the Python, you can imagine like a command. What, what every line you're typing is a command now. Whereas internally, there's a program. In the shell scripting, whatever you say, CP source path and destination path, that source path and destination path complete is a program internally. So it is already in the C language. So now you are not able to see what is happening internally. You are not able to see the file handling program there. But what you are able to see right now is the execution here. So here the focus is execution. Your focus is not, your focus is not like a, uh, understanding the detail or writing the detail about the program. So for writing the detail about the program, you need to go for the Java or C, C++. But if you want to write high level code, you simply want to copy the source path and describe, you may go for the scripting language. I hope you understood the, the little bit different with the scripting and the, uh, and the programming language. The next thing is, what is the difference between the uh, programming language and object-only programming language? Miss procedure-oriented language and the object-only programming language. When you say object on the programming language, we think about like there's a classes and object here, right? So here in the Java case, it is an object on the programming language. Whereas in the Python case, I would like to say it is an object the scripting language. In the case of Java, you try the class and then you create an object, and based on that, you can use the object. But in the case of Python, you can do what? You can directly use the object here. So objects are really defined. And you can, using the object, you can write a class also. So that is what we are going to learn in the topic object only programming in the Python. So uh, to start with this session, you generally require to have Python installation first. So I don't know like how many guys already installed the Python, how many guys are already using the Python. So those who are not installed the Python, my recommendation for them will be first thing is to download the Python from either from the site called python.org, that is the one of the source, the second source I will tell you, that is the Anaconda, where you, you can visit the anaconda.com site, and from here, you can download based on the operating system. I already tell you like which version now, this is, this is the latest version, that is the Python 3.8 version. Based on your operating system, whether it's Windows, or whether it's a Unix, or, or, or it is a Mac, you can download, uh, again, like a 64-bit or 32-bit. Any question here right now? Let me like what okay. Python is discussing about it. Okay, no, not an issue, sir. Thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, I need to connect. I already connected previously, so let I don't know quite what in connecting. I just close this. 
So let me test this now first. This is Anaconda notebook. I'm just testing the simple hello world now. So it's showing the immediate response. This is what actually says like it is an interactive language and it is an interpreted language also. You just say whatever you want to say, like say print hi and it is available to you. Right? Whereas in the case of Java C C you know like how many lines of code it right? So uh, here, uh, there is some assumption in this particular uh, uh, course that you know some basic of Python. Based on that, I'll be a little bit advanced here. Uh, is it okay to start with a little bit advanced topic here? Yes, sir. Okay. Or fine. So quickly again, like I'm, I'll be going through the, the basic thing quickly. Uh, the question is like, why Python? There are many reasons why Python. Some of the reasons, like let me tell you, like one of the major reasons that why we should learn the Python and why industry is looking for the Python. One of the major reasons of is that Python is a, one of the most productive language here. Now, first question comes to your mind, like what is productive language means? When you say it is a productive language and when you say it is a non-productive language. So productive means here you can do more thing in a less time. That is what uh, productive means here. As in Python requires less lines of code, you don't require to write more lines of code here. Like in the Java, you need to write, let's say, 20 lines of code that you can perform in the Python with a just a four or five lines of code only. So it means you can you can perform the task quickly here. In many cases, you have the library also available. Like Python is having a, a rich set of library. So like, for example, data science library, or you have unit testing library, or you have a database library or big data library. So for everything, this is a library available. Because of that, you can perform the task quickly. You don't require to write a code for each and everything. Next thing is, as it is an object-oriented scripting language. So classes are already defined. You don't require to write a, a classes again and again. So you can write a class only when you want to overwrite something. You want to create your own custom class, uh, your custom object then you can write your own class. So, but it is not mandatory in the Python case. In the case of Java, you need to write a class and then only you can get a, you can use the object and all. But that's not the case in the Python. So that way, it is your choice. So you have a choice, you have flexibility here. So there are many, uh, like, you know, the reason why we should go for Python. So one of the major reason is, is a product language. Second major reason why we should learn Python, why industry using Python is the language is very easy to learn and use. As compared to other languages like uh, like a C, C++ and Java, if you look at the Python, I just started the interpreter and I said print hello. And you saw like how easy it is to do that in the case of Python. And uh, the code is so reliable. Like you, you, you will see the code. I'll be writing the code here today. And you are going to see like how easy it is to write the code. And the major code I'll be writing today is an object-oriented programming code here, where I'll be taking the complete case study about how you can create uh, your own class library. So, uh, but before that, I'll be taking the quick topic or quick basic about the Python here, like like what deadlines are or the mutability and immutability, which I will take in the previous session. Python is having the huge library and it has a big community also. It's a very much mature language. It is having a 30 plus years old language now. It's not the language that started recently. It's a 30 plus year old language. And it has a huge uh, uh, material available, like in terms of video tutorial, your, your, uh, in terms of uh, blogs, guidelines. You, if, if you visit the site, python.org, you'll get tutorial as well as you'll get the uh, documents for that. Uh, one thing I told you, like, uh, why Python? One of the biggest reasons is uh, the kind of library Python is having. Now, if you want to become data scientist, you require certain library for data analysis. You require library for the machine learning. You require library for visualization. You require library for plotting of data that is available in the Python. You simply need to install the Anaconda. You get all these loaded. So that's what one of the one of the benefit here. One of the biggest benefit here in the Python is. 
So that's why even the artificial intelligence, let's say you want to go for AI-based programming, Python is the base for that. So you have a library for the a TensorFlow library, which is for the machine learning as well as for the AI. So that is what even the Google, Google company is using that library instead. Let me tell you that big company like Google, uh, your Dropbox, your uh, uh, Instagram, all these companies, they are based on the Python only. The next thing is like, uh, yeah, like that we have other library like Bitmodabi library, like Django library for the, one of the biggest frameworks, like I could like Instagram. Instagram is uh, created using the Django framework. Then the language is flexible. Now you may be, uh, you know, it is your interest now. You have the choice. You have the choice to select your interest. You don't uh, need to be restricted to be a, let's say, tester, or you are not restricted to go for web programmer, something like that here. So here, what is your choice? Whether you like to be a Jira programmer, means you are interested in the Jira programming for Windows programming, yes, you can do that. You are interested in the web programming, yes, there's a library for that. You are interested in testing, automation testing, there's a library for that. You are interested in networking, yes, we have powerful library in the for network automation. I take a separate session for networking, uh, guys, on network automation. I take a separate session for the web developer, that is our Django uh, full stack development. For data scientists, I have a separate session. So like that, you have a, you have varieties available, which is not like easy in other languages. Like you, if, like you don't have that, you know, like a, you have some special. Like if you go for SQL, you can do only database uh, programming. If you go for R language, because some of the guys are asking me the question, why not to learn R language? I say yes, you can learn R language, but then you have one purpose only, that is data science purpose. But that's not the case in the Python. Here you have the choice, whether you like to be a data scientist, whether you like to go automation tester, whether you like to be a web programmer, that's your choice now. I, even you may have some entertainment thing, like you want to, uh, you like to go for the visualization or game development, that is also the option available. I told you like rapid web frameworks are in the Python. What we are using the, in our website like jkdc.com, we are using the framework Django. One of the biggest and the highest uh, high level framework available. Uh, then we have a, uh, like I told you, a game development library like a PySoin, 3D game application you can develop using that. We have a big data. Nowadays, what happened, every company is having the, uh, you know, producing like YouTube or you take over the Google or it, they have the petabytes of data. Every day they are producing petabytes of data. But to manage that, we have a library available in the Python, that is the PySpark library. PySpark is another high level uh, language which is written in the Python itself. And it's for specifically for the big data analysis. We also have a library, I told you like previously, like the machine level learning, uh, we have a scientific learn library available. We are, I told you like for neural networks, those who like to specifically interest in the AI and uh, they can go for the TensorFlow library, which is also available in the Python itself. So now there's a choice for you. As I told you like for the web programming or for the GUI programming, you have a library called GK Inter library available in the Python. We have a WS widget library, we have TV library, as well as PyPT library for the desktop GUI programming. Someone who is interested in the scrapping the data. Now you want to scrap the data. What is scrapping data means like you have like a HTML data, you have a XML data, you have, you have web-based data, and you want to scrap, extract the data from that. So we have libraries for that, like a BS for that is beautiful soup, Scrappy, LXML, this kind of framework allows you to scrap the data from the web, which is already available, and you can store or you can have, create one report from it. So we have a library for that available. Even for automation testing, like Selenium library is there, where you can uh, you can run the, you, you can test your website, your all the URLs, and also perform some action on the web URL. So, so Selenium library is one of the famous library, which is available in the Python itself. Someone who is interested in the embedded programming, now, some of you are, the, let's say, some of you are some students, class students, college students, and all. They're having the project on working on some devices. And you say, like, sir, you can do only in the C programming, uh, that embedded device programming. That's what generally prefer. But do you have something for in the Python? So let me know Python is written in the C language. And as a result, we have a library for, uh, you know, like we have interface in the C language also. And we have a, a, one Raspberry Pi where this is one of the device which you can buy it, uh, using Amazon. It's like a mini computer. There you can do the embedded programming also. So like the kids, they would like to play with the devices and also write the programming. Yes, there's the Raspberry Pi which is available for them. So in short, 
Python is a very, very powerful language to learn. It is not having the dynamic type feature. One of the something new thing, like, uh, like dynamic typing means you do not require to define data type here. Like in other languages, like C, C++, and you need to define data type, whether it's the integer, float, string, and all those things. But that's not the case in the Python. I will show the demo also, like why it is, uh, like uh, in the dynamic typing, what happened? You just simply give a value, and based on the value, the interpreter understand it. It has a built-in data structure. It's a very powerful data structure available, like we have a list, tuple, dictionary, and uh, uh, we have like uh, this, like this data structure. You can use it for multiple, like for example, list. You can perform the stack operation. You can perform queue operation or linked list operation and many more. Searching, sorting, all are built-in. They're all objects here. So that is a powerful data structure in the uh, in the Python, and also has a powerful library. It has a very powerful framework and biggest community support here. So, uh, and one more reason why Python, like to tell you, <clears throat> the language is open source. So you don't require to pay any license fees. It is freely downloadable and easy to learn. As per the survey, it is found that, that Python is a language where more is, uh, it is the most uh, uh, easiest language as compared to the other languages like JavaScript, Go language, TypeScript, TypeScript and many other languages. So one of the useful and easy to learn language in the 2020. So here, uh, this was a quick idea about like what is Python and why Python. I hope you understand like what is Python. Let me quickly those who join late that Python is a general purpose, interpreted, interactive, object oriented scripting language. It's a high level language. It has a dynamic typing. It's a language which is for everyone. I told you about like why Python also that why Python is here is something I told you like the benefit of the Python is a language which is a most productive language for the, all the developer, all the types of developer here. Next thing is here, uh, like what is the history behind Python? No, again quickly we are going to, because someone who started the Python, he is a snake, because I am showing you here on the screen, there's a, there's a big snake. So let me tell you the language Python has not come from the name snake here. It is something else. So what is the, what is, how the name Python came? And who is the person behind this? Okay, so the person name is Guru Van Rusam. Who invented Python? You can see him, the person who started the uh, Python. He started in the 1989. He started working on it. And he, he was working on He was having the, some uh, interest in the developing some language. And uh, from the company ABC, he started with a, a national, in the, in, in the Netherlands, in the National Research Institute for the Mathematics and Computer Science, he was doing this project. And uh, uh, as doing the project, he was having the idea to start uh, you know, creating the interpreter. And with the help of C language, he started writing the code. And how the name, the name Python is from the, uh, one of the circles or one of the uh, uh, BBC TV show that is Monty Python, which was a very, very famous in the USA from that name, of uh, that uh, the, the Python name changed. It's not from this name. It is from the, the show that is Monty Python Flying Circus Show. There were several versions uh, which came in the Python. It's from the inception, like, you know, the first version you can, uh, like, obviously there are several minor version also, micro version also. Like, uh, the, I, I'm just uh, like writing the major version, like 0.9 version, which came in 1991. 1.0 came in 1994. 1.2.0, Two thousand and three dot two thousand eight. Again, there are so many minor versions into like two dot one, three, four, five, six, seven, till eight. Like that two dot X version was still there. It is still there available. Uh, one dot and uh, point nine. Obviously, obviously, they are not. Uh, nobody using now. But then, which is the use? Mostly used version is a three dot X version now. Uh, till two thousand nineteen, I can say we are having the great support for two dot X version also. But now. From 2020 onwards, the support is there only for uh, 3.x version only. Uh, the, they started with a very minimum feature like writing the classes and writing the functions and models, and then uh, added something more like a built-in functions. Today, I'll be telling you some of the built-in functions of Python here. And then for the, uh, uh, the complex number, so like that, every version, some update, uh, you know, Python started updating. And when it becomes open source, again, like the entire community started writing the code for the Python. So some of the features which are powerful features available in the Python 2.x, which are also available in the Python 3.x, that is list comprehension, 
Uh, then we have Unicode support available in the 3.x version by default now. We have a print function in the bracket. Previously, it was optional in the case of 2.x version. Now it is mandatory. Uh, we have a, previously it was like a, a prefix string. U was for the Unicode string. Now you don't require to. By default, uh, Python 3.x is having the Unicode string now. Previously, the version like you know 2.x version, we're using the raw underscore input as an input statement. But now what we are doing is we are using the directly input statement in the 3.x version. So I, any of these difference we need to know, like because some of the guys who are working on the legacy applications, they may be using the 2.x version. So there's a difference between the 2.x version and 3.x version. In the 3.x version, you will see input statement only, which is not available in, in the case of 3.x uh, version, we have two input statements, that is raw underscore input, and the input statement both are available. In the 2.x version, where when we were dividing like a, let's say numeric like 5 divided by 2, the return output was 2. So the floating point was, uh, the decimal was uh, not showing there, but whereas in the case of, uh, it was like, uh, whereas in the 3.x version, you can see the 2.5 as an as a output here. So that's also difference you will see here. So the 3.x varies, that's, this is what the series will be using actually. So 3.7, 3.8, this is the latest version out in the Python now. There are so many features which is added in the 3.x version, like uh, some major function, uh, major is like uh, in the print statement, all print statement what modified, and all the print statements are like a function uh, print statement only. Then we have a, a, a I told you like raw underscore input statement is deprecated now. Uh, then here we have by default Unicode string. So uh, quickly let me tell you like the differences between this that. The Python 2.x version and 3.x version, you can see the differences here that how uh, uh, how, that, uh, how it works in the 2.x. Here the, the library is not forward compatible in the 2.x version. Whereas in the case of uh, uh, in the case of 3.x version, not backward compatible. So this is the one major difference here. And uh, as you can see here, the, that in the case of a uh, 2.x version, when you say 7 divided by, by 2, uh, output is around calculation, whereas in the 3.x version, you can see the result is expected. So this is a, one of the major difference between the 2.x version and also the print statement. Here, all the print statement, let's say you are in the code in the 2.x, all the print statement you need to modify now. Uh, there are features. Uh, there are several features on the Python, but in between, I to start the hands-on now. So here I'll be uh, starting the hands-on, and then again I'll come back to the uh, some theory part here. Uh, so. Sanket, any, any problem or any questions here? I just want to check once one more time. Sanket, Amit. No problem, sir. Uh, I hope no, uh, sir. the video streaming is working now. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So I'm just sharing the hands-on session now. Uh, I hope you have Python installed. Like, uh, uh, can you tell me, like, uh, uh, will you be doing the hands-on here right now? Anyone just respond me, like, I hope you guys will be doing the hands on along with me. Okay, so I'm starting with Anaconda here. Uh, what I did in the previous session is like, okay, the screen is not visible, right? Let me share the screen. So previous session, I showed like how the Python works. Uh, in the in the notebook, I just started a simple statement and just did the arithmetic calculation and shown like how Python. So here quickly, uh, those who are joined for first time, let me show the quickly the Python here how the dynamic feature of the Python is. So if I have something here like uh, in this case data equal to uh, hello, now Python responds to you like what the type here is. Just say now type here and Python say it is a is a string now. So what happened in this case, I did not define data. I did not say that this is an integer or this is a float or this is a string, but Python interpreters understanding here. 
Now, if I change the value here, I'm just changing the value and showing the result now. Just say numeric value, you see that it is showing INT. So it is showing that it is an integer type. But what exactly INT here? What exactly STR here? Now, these are the built-in classes. They are not just a data type. They are also the classes here. So here, when you say it is a classes, it has a, some structure already defined. So let me show how it looks internally. So here there is a help document for that. And if you just say help of INT, you will be able to see the structure for that. So there's a class INT. Under that, there are data type defined, or the methods are defined. So it is a data and method together. You can see the help of STR similarly to understand what STR it includes. It includes the, the method, which you will understand here. Like this is the class STR. And under that, there are several methods available. So there is a type count method, you have a find method, and or many more methods like that. OK, so this is the way the structure internally. So here, it is not like other data type, like C, C++, where you need to define data type first, and then uh, you need to you know, use it. That's not the case in the Python. Python, it is dynamic typing. That is what I have So here you change the value again, let's say to so uh, six years, so it is saying float type. So that's the third type of data. The fourth one is, let's say the Boolean type, you just say true here, and interpret understand is a Boolean type. What is the next? I will just say now here it is a, a five dot, let's say, or maybe something 10 dot, uh, 20 J. What is the type it is now? Is it integer? No, it is not float. It is not a string. What type it is? So the answer is it is a complex type. So interpreter is understanding it's a complex type. Other languages, when you say it is, it is showing like in a I, instead of J, there is an I. So what is this J here? It's an imaginary value. So this complex number, when you say data, it includes two things. One is the real value, and one is imaginary value. So here, if I say data dot I am image, it gets an imaginary value. So here, complex number consists of two things, real value plus imaginary. It also includes a method like data.com conjugate method. And you can see the result here. That is 10 minus 20 j. So this is a conjugate of complex number. So like that, we have varieties of data types, which are all classes already defined in the case. Next thing, what Python is having is a data structure. So what are the types of data structure we have in the Python? We have a mutable and immutable category. I already taken the, this list of the mutability and immutability in the previous thing, but quickly I'm showing here what mutable means here. Mutable means here the where you can modify data. So which are the data structure which comes into the mutable category? So we have a list, tuple. Uh, okay, list is there, which is a mutable category. The next category is a uh, dictionary. Dictionary is a mutable category. Set is a mutable category. Which is a immutable then? So we have a string which comes into the uh, immutable. We have a tuple which is a immutable category. Numbers is not data structure, but also it is a immutable category. So like that, we have a two category of data structure, which are a high level and very, very powerful data structure in the Python. So these are the parts. So, what is the difference between the data structure and data type? Someone can tell me here that what is the difference between the data structure and data types? So data structure is something where you can store more than one value. Whereas data type means you can store only, data structure means you can store multiple values. That's the, that's the difference, right? So one thing is, one major difference is that data structure means you can store more than one value here. So here we are going to understand, uh, I have shown in the previous session like what the list is all about. List is a mutable data structure now. So it is a sequence, uh, it's a mutable sequence of object. Where objects means here it could be, okay, this is different than list and array. Array means we have a, uh, is a, like a, a sequence of similar type of data, but that's not a case in the case of list. List is a mutable sequence of any type of object. So you can have all the objects here. You can have integer, you can have float, you can have a string, anything you can have. All objects. So all are objects in the Python. Python, everything what you type is an object here. So everything you can have object here. 
So quickly, I'll give a one small demo of list here, and then we will start with the, I'll give a quick demo about the dictionary also, and then uh, the quick demo about the uh, control structure. So list, how do you define the list here? In this case, let's take an example of, maybe it's books. Books is an example, let's say. You can define the square bracket. So by this, it understands it is a list. You can add the books now here by putting the append. You can use the list like a stack. What is stack? Stack means data which I added the last is a first out. So I can add the data here quickly. So I'm just adding the, let's say Java. Like that, I will add the multiple books now. I should always define everything in the same, otherwise, uh, let me define it in the same. So, Java, Jython, Perl, Python, maybe C, P, P, So, like that, we added the multiple books here, and you can see data is added in the books. Now here, you can also, uh, this is like we added means it's like, uh, we want to see like how books can be used, this particular list can be like a stack. So the data which are last is a first term. So let us do this, let us uh, perform the operation which will remove the data now. So here you can say books.pop. And see the result. I should write a print in between. And you can see the result. So what happened in this case? The data which was already last, like iron pattern is removed now. So again, if you execute this, see what happened. Again, one data is removed. Print it one more time. So last in, first out. This is the way your list can work like a stack. You can use a list like a queue also. I'm showing like how list can work like a queue. I simply to uh, remove the method here instead of saying the pop, I will just say pop of zero. And see the result now, it will remove the first item every time. So now here, this list is working like a queue. How, because what is queue here? Queue means first in, first out. So the data which is added first, like Java, is removed first. Then we added the Jython that is also removed. So that way, this list is working like a first in, first out. So this is what we say here, Q. Like that, you can perform other operation like you can have link list operation here. So this is like, a, I'll just write a comment here. Here it is a Q, here it is a stack. How about link list? Link list means what happened in the case of link list. So let me tell you like how does how the link list work here now. In the link list case, you can add data at any index position and you can remove from any index position. So how we do that? Here we simply need to now I want to uh, let me show the index first before I before I finish. Let's say uh, this is the books now, and you want to first of all see the index position, like books of uh, one, which is now you can see Jython. Now I want to insert the new item at you can insert anywhere any index. So index is like starting from zero, then one, two, three, four, five. So if you want to insert in between, you simply to do what? Books dot insert. And you can tell the index position. So it could be two, let's say two, means zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So at this position, I want to insert some new data here, maybe Django, and see the result. So this way, your list is working like a linked list. You can also remove from any position by using the other method you can use one more method called remove method and you can remove it. 
So here I'm doing what? I'll just simply say remove. But here this time, instead of index, I'll be removing by the name. So I want to remove, let's say, uh, maybe CPP. And see the result now that print books, CPP is removed now. So this way you can perform linked list operation also using the same data structure list. Like that, there are many more operations like you can sort the data. How do you do sorting? You can say simply books dot sort and print books. So these are the feature what you see, these are all mutable feature of the Python. You can also update the, uh, uh, like you can update the data. Like I want to update, uh, let's say the second index Maybe it is the iron Python. Now I'll just access it and I can update it now. I can just say uh, something new now, maybe a screen. And now you can print it books and the result is something else. Now you can see the, it got modified. The previously the result was iron Python. Now it is Django and spring. So this is how easy is like you can modify the data in the data structure like this. And you can like you can also have like how do you know what are the methods are there? So let me tell you like what are the methods. So I'm just listing the method here by simply saying the here the DIR of books, which will give the all the methods associated with this particular list now. So what this books list contains, which I have not defined, which are already there. So what is this book? Books is the object of list. As a result, this particular book is having all the method associated with it. So you can see append, clear, copy, count, extend, index, and many more methods are available, which are also the list itself. Like that, we have another data structure, which is a immutable. So let me show the immutable data structure like a tuple. How do you define tuple? Tuple is defined like this. Tuple is like, a, let me first, uh, show the definition of tuple. So what is the difference of the list and tuple? List is a mutable, whereas, uh, okay, I'll write it here quickly. Tuple is an immutable, immutable data structure, so immutable sequence now, I will say. Sequence of objects. So again, like, it's a sequence of object, but it's an immutable sequence of object. Uh, means, uh, like, the sequence is immutable here. I'm like not of the object could be anything, but sequence is immutable here. So it's a immutable uh, sequence. And object could be anything again, int, float, string, whatever you want to say, or object. So how do you define now? Let me show the how to define the tuple now. So you define tuple by simply saying, let's say anything, take any example here, let's say tup equal to this bracket, down bracket. So one of the way of showing the tuple is saying tuple. The other way is like you say tup1, let's say t1. t1 is equal to one comma two. And if you just say, uh, what is t1? Interpreter says is a tuple. Now see the difference, I, in the first case I say, you know, a bracket, round bracket, and then interpreter says the tuple when there was no value. But next, next second case, uh, I, I did not provide any bracket, but interpreter has understood automatically. So there's a logical line behind whatever you are writing here as a physical line. What you see is a physical line, but what interpreter understands is a logical line. And this is what happened in this case. So if you see the T1 now, internally what has happened, the interpreter has assumed that it is a tuple now. I did not, uh, you know, define it as a tuple, but interpreter is understanding whenever you are saying comma separated value. So by default, whenever you are saying comma separated value in the Python case, it is as you miss it is Python interpreter understand that it is a tuple. Now tuple is what I say so immutable. So let us test it now. This t1 of uh, zero, what is the t1 of zero? Is a first value, one value. So can I modify this? Let us try to modify it to a or some number, anything you can try and see what happens. So it is said that tuple object does not support item assignment. So what does it mean here that, that tuple is something where you cannot modify. Whereas in the list we, we just saw like you can modify it. 
So this is what the difference between the tuple and the list. So we have mutable operation in the case of a, a list, whereas there's no mutable operation available in the tuple. So where do we use tuple now? I can use the tuple in the many cases, like I can use a shopping the, or shopping the number uh, and I can release the lines of code. So for example, I'm writing the one small program here uh, for shopping the number. So here I'll just say uh, first, okay, uh, maybe F first, uh, These are the variable I'm taking it. Second, third, fourth. And the other four variables. Firstly, I will do the parallel assignment. So here I can understand you have the parallel assignment while understanding the shopping also. So I'll just say any value here, let's say 34, 56, 98, or let's say 78. So these are the four values which I have defined in the one line. The first thing is here I use a one line. Four lines I written in a one line only. Not only that, in other languages, you have to define the rights. Here, I don't require to do that part. Then, next thing is I want to shop it. In Python, shopping is just like a two lines of code. Now, here I did the first, second, third, fourth, all these things, and I can simply say, in, instead of, here I will say, here, fourth. For, I'll give the fourth value to the first, then third value to the second, then for third, I will say it is the second, and for the 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 fourth, I will say to the first. So anything you can do it just by writing it and see the difference now. And now, what is the output of this shopping? Let us see. Whereas in other programming language, you know, you have to write at least at least eight to ten lines of code. Here, I just wrote the two to three lines, and it's done. Like you remember in the other languages, C, C++, you need to take one more variable for even for shopping the two number, but that's not the case in the Python. Python is such a language where you can have parallel assignment also. So it's like all tuple, like you are just giving the value to the tuple. Now this was about uh, like how is a tuple. Now third thing in the data structure, which is very important, I'll just a quick idea like is a dictionary. Dictionary is something where you can simply say in the bracket, a flower bracket and interpreter understand it is a dictionary. So you can give any name here, you can just say D1 in a flower bracket, check what it is, it is saying it is a dictionary. So what is dictionary? Dictionary is not like a list or it's not a sequence. It's not a sequence, first of all. So what it is then? It is something where we have a key value pair, means we have a key and value. So what is the kind of, it is an unordered collection. So I will say it is a collection. So let me define dictionary. Dictionary, or maybe I'll write in the comment here. Dictionary is an unordered, I'm not saying order because here dictionary is not having the specific sequence. There's no uh, specific sequence where you add the data. So it's unordered collection of unique, immutable, Unique and immutable key, and it, now in the case of values and mutable or immutable values. I have customized definition in this way to understand so that you understand what exactly in this case of dictionary. Dictionary is a collection again, but it's an unordered collection of, it's like a collection of what unique immutable keys and value pairs. I will say values pair. So pair, so how how we use it here now? Let me show you. So here I will do the D1 of, let's say I will put the dictionary could be a key. Key could be like say your name is a key now and the value could be the name, Surendra. Now you have a, let's say something else like a number uh, as a key and the value could be a uh, number or string, anything you can have, maybe a number or you can have string it, maybe here you can say anything here. So D1 is what? D1 is a dictionary which complete, which includes now this two key, that is a name as a key and 20 as a key, and your values like surrender and the time here. So how do you know that? So you can simply see the here keys. 
and you can see the values here by method, method call value. And all are object here again. So these are all built in objects. You can see dictionary is also defined now in the Python. So dictionary is a class internally. We already defined it, uh, Python, has, Python has already defined the dictionary, and you can also see the help for that. You can see what else are the methods available in the dictionary. It's one of the powerful data structures in the Python to perform the various operations. Like some language we have a hash, uh, some language we have a JSON. JSON is having like a key and value pair, right? So same way here in the Python, we have a dictionary. So here, this is something where if you want to store data in the form of that key and value pair, you can use a dictionary. Now, this was again a, a basic data structure. I did not go in detail about the uh, data structure here. And uh, the third thing I would like to tell here is about uh, uh, control structure. Control structure quickly again, uh, before we go for the object only programming. So how do you like control structure programming here? Like uh, what control structure means? We have if, elect, for, while, all those things, right? So let me show you like how do you write a program here. So I'll show the small program here that how do you do, how do you write in the Python because one of the important thing in the Python that Python is a in, uh, indented language. So how do you write a code in the Python? So let me write a, a small program like a, maybe a greatest of three number uh, or greatest of two number. Maybe you can see it first and then you can in, uh, you know write it for the three number or so. So let me tell you like how do you take the input from the keyboard first. So let's say we have a first value. We are taking the data here, int of input, because to take the integer value, enter uh, first value. Then like that, I will be taking the second value here. And now compare. Now here we have to understand the flow. If first is greater than second, simple. Now indentation you can see here. As soon as I say first will greater than second, and the indentation is done now. So here I'm not using <coughs> brackets. So what I'm using here is a is a colon, and now I can just check it like print first is greater. Now here else part you are right below the if now that is else print now again colon is required print second is greater. Okay, so let us see how does it work. Okay, we'll print the value also here. The first. And here I'm writing the second. Very simple code. I guess everybody will understand also because I just took a two variable and see the result now. It is asking for the first value. Let's say any value now, 45, okay, 46. And the second value again, 98. Saying second is greater now. Very very simple code. Now let me uh, you know write it you know one most uh, you know uh, program for the greatest of now two number I like wrote it now let us try write a greatest of three number. You can also try at your end uh, greatest of three number. So how do you do that here? You simply write one more variable. Why am I adding this credit of three number? Because there's a small change here now. Here we have to understand one more uh, statement that is elif statement. So that's why I'm taking the greatest of three number. So first, second, and third. So here, enter third. So what should I do now in this case? I have to write one more statement called elif statement. So if else if, so for else if we have a elif. If second is okay, here I have to have the two things first, second, and third. So I have to check if first is greater than second and first is greater than third. 
this should be the logic, right? I should check the first time, or both, like for first user, I'm checking like whether the first is greater than second or not, and also I'm checking with the first is greater than third or not. If in both the conditions are true, then only I will say first is greatest. Right? Whereas in case it is not, then I have to check one more condition here, whether the second is greater than third. In case second, if see, in, in, in this case, if it fail here, if it fails, in the case the first number is not greater, then only to go for the second statement, that is elif statement. So in this case now, it will check whether second is greater than third or not. If S, then second is greater, then we have to have the statement like, yes, second is greatest number now among all. But in case both the condition fails, even first is not, uh, first fail, even elif statement second fail, then the last is the optional one, which is by default. The default will be what? What will be the default? It will be third is greatest now. So here I have to print third is greatest. The object is not to understand this code. Code is very simple. Object is like how I wrote the code here. The code indentation, look at the code, because most of you guys having the C, C++ and Java background, there's a di different syntax. What you have to understand the difference between the syntax of C, C++, Java, and the Python syntax now. You can see how simple is the code for the greatest top key number here. In this case, what I did, I simply say whatever I want. I wanted to have the first number, I took the first number, like that second, third, and on. Then, very simple, I just took, uh, I just uh, wrote the logic here, like the first is greater than second, and the first is greater than third, then in the first is greatest. It is, instead of LC, if the first condition fail, go for the second, right? And if part, right? So let us check it now, whether this particular code is syntactically correct or not. What second observation you should have, I did not use any curly bracket here. Whereas in other language, you need to use a curly bracket to start. Instead of that, I am using the colon here. You can see the language is readable. You can also give the spaces, like here, as per the rule, we should always put certain spaces in between. You can also write a comment in between. Just say, this is like I'm taking the first number, this is the second number, third number, and you can put certain space here then. Now, this way, the code should be. So this way, the code is more readable. Now, if I want to save this program, I can save also. I'm just writing the, in Anaconda, there's a command called right line. So I'm writing the right line command here, by percentage. This is Anaconda command, this is not related to Python. So write file, sorry. Write file, and I have to say, what is the file name now? Maybe uh, it is uh, greatest. Uh, I must have written several times. Greatest. 3.py. Okay, py is the extension of Python because uh, I think the in this Anaconda I'm writing the first time this dot .py extension here. So those guys who did not uh, see the how the Python code is. So whenever you see the Python code, it is having the extension called dot .py. Now let's see how does it work. So it is saying overriding because I wrote this program several times. I'm just running it now. Get a stop tree. So yes, we have options here. Uh, get a stop key. I just now overwrite this. Let's see how does it work. Oh, it's asking for the first number. I'll just say uh, uh, maybe uh, seven, then uh, shift enter, then let's say nine, and then yes. So you can see the second is the better. So very simple. And you can run this code from anywhere now. As I wrote this uh, right file, let me look through. And although I wrote here, so this code I can execute from outside also. From here I can execute, I can execute from the terminal. So I will just have a terminal here. Uh, let me uh, start the terminal first. This window is coming in the pain. Okay, so is this a terminal? Okay, I'm, I'll be showing the 
So here, uh, if I want to run this code, okay, I now this code is written in the environment of Anaconda. I'm running on the, uh, because there that is there for required virtual machine here. So I'm just trying here now, Python 3. And uh, code is greatest uh, of uh, 3, greatest of 3, right? Or I wrote it greatest, whatever it is, like, I think I didn't get this three, right? Dot P one. So you're asking your first number. That's it. So how simple it is, uh, you know, writing the program and execute from anywhere. Let me read the Python. You can write a program uh, in a, any any editor, not necessarily in Anaconda. You can write program in the V editor. You can write a program in anywhere. Okay, so uh, now here we'll have the some question answer in between, and then we'll go for the for the next topic. Uh, you can ask the question now. Okay, say someone say like unable to see your screen, or uh, was it like for everyone just like that? Till now the screen was. No, we are able to see. Okay, I think maybe for some. Okay. So uh, any question, you can uh, write a question here somewhere. Like, did you understand till now that how we can execute Python uh, script? Uh, like, was it like easy for you or it was difficult? Uh, was it fast or was it slow? slow? I'm like, just want because it all depends on you because some of you will be knowing the Python. Some of you are very new to Python. That's why I thought to give the quick introduction to Python. But then, uh, yeah, someone said like, how about nested if statement? Let me tell you, you can have the nested if statement by if and elif structure. You can have multiple elif structure. So uh, that way you don't require to worry about the, okay, so there's one question, like let me answer the most of the question because it's very important to answer the question also. So the question here is that is Anaconda is the only editor for the Python? The answer is no. Is not the only editor. Let me tell you, there are multiple editors available. There are very, very easy editors available. Uh, I'm like, my favorite, uh, it's not actually editor, as such, it's the complete tool itself. Anaconda is more than editor. It is a complete data science library. It's a distributed uh, tool. So we have very simple uh, uh, things available. Like if, if you go to the, you know, the python.org, you will able to uh, even have, for the Windows, your ID is also available along with the, the Python. Uh, even you have very simple editor, you can use like a, a sublime text editor. There also you can write it, the code, you can write the code in the VR. So it is independent of editor itself. So you do not require to worry about the specific editor uh, or ID in the Python here. So yeah, it's not only editor then. Anaconda is one of uh, one of the, you can say, powerful distributed tool you can say. So the question here is that does it have switch case kind of a block other language? Let me look again, like in other languages like C, C++, and uh, Java, you have a switch statement, but that is not needed in the Python. You can have multiple elif itself, and using the multiple elif also, you can perform the switch and uh, case kind of a statement. So you don't require to have a switch. So it is, Python believes on, uh, uh, you know, we can say, uh, minimizing the syntax, minimizing the keywords. So that's what happened in the case of Python. So uh, I hope you understood, like uh, I, I answered the, so any, any other questions? Okay, so then we can go ahead. Okay, there are some questions like, can you run Python on a Windows or Linux without any modification? Yes, we, uh, so let me tell you the language is platform independent. So you do not require to worry about the platform, like, like because now I'm writing the script on the, on the Mac, you can run the same script on Windows, uh, you can run the same script on any other OS. So it's a platform independent. You do not require to modify much as, as long as you are not writing anything specific to the operating system. But what, because this script is independent of, uh, independent of, you can say, the operating system. Yeah. Then the question is, does it have pointers? Answer is no. By default, here all are objects. You do not require to have separate point. pointer. So here everything is object. So yeah, reference. There's a reference. So there's a there's a dynamic memory allocation here. You do not require to allocate the memory manually or statically. Here everything is automatic. So here 
dynamic memory allocation. So runtime only, it allocates the memory. And we do not have pointer, but we have references because objects are references, right, by default. Okay, there's a question like, uh, as an investment banking professional, how Python is helpful? A uh, very good question again. So let me tell you, the Python is helpful for everyone. Uh, it doesn't matter actually whether you are into a banking domain or whether it is a, whether it is a data, uh, um, like a, a software domain. So let's say if you're in the banking domain, you can use a Python for uh, data analysis, very good, you can do financial analysis. Why not? Like you need to do financial analysis. So we have a library for financial analysis. So Python gives you the library for doing the financial analysis. So yes, you can go for the financial analysis library and you can use a Python and you can do the thing quickly. So your automation of financial analysis is possible using the Python. One question is how Python is helpful for the mechanical industry. Okay, so let me tell you the, whichever the industries, right? Automation, where there's a software, like every industry now automation is happening, right? Whether it's the automobile industry or mechanical industry or whatever the industries. So when you're saying automation, Python is there. Python is a language to automate the stuff. I can tell you like every industry Python can use. You tell me industry, I'll tell you how you can use the Python. Because I've been using the Python for almost all industry. I have seen that, like I'll tell you the company like Cisco or company like IBM, company like all the most of the big company, they all are using the Python. Even like, you know, like automobile industry where the Google is using the cell drive car and everything is Python based now. So it is, yes, like when you are actually program, programming is for everyone. Programming is for banking industry. Tell me like which industry where there's a programming is not there. So programming is there for all industry. How about healthcare industry? Yes, I'll let me tell you, I have given a session to the healthcare industry using the Python. They require, they are using the Python extensively for, for the, even I can tell you the, the patient data, they want to do analysis and they want to generate the report for that. So for that also, the Python is used now. So every domain Python is used. So healthcare industry, it is all about patient data or whatever you say, the uh, the kind of data analysis you want to do it. I can tell you data analysis is done in the almost all industry. So wherever there is the data analysis or market analysis, Python is used there. The question is now, is object-oriented programming important for data science? Okay, so the question, data science is something, okay, it's a, it's a topic here. Uh, object-oriented programming is, uh, knowledge about object programming is useful, uh, but then it is not mandatory. How, like you do not require to write a, your own classes for performing the data science operation because Python is giving you library for doing that operation. So it is not mandatory, but if you have a knowledge because Whatever the uh, library you are going to use, all will be internally using the classes and the object only. So very good questions. I think I could see like many very good questions are coming up and uh, I'm very happy to answer also all these questions. So the question is like, are the Python libraries you mentioned in the beginning are free and open source? I can tell you that's the beauty of the Python. You have uh, so much of libraries freely available. I, I have not bike in now any single library, even though I did a so much of programming. We have such a big community. They are just having doing the very noble cause, you can say they are just sharing it. And you can be a part of that community. You can also write your own library and you can share to the community. That is the way the community is developed. So it, it has the biggest community in the world. And yes, you do not require to worry. And it, See, Python, what is the library see in the GitHub is available or even along with the distributor, like you can see like uh, uh, Anaconda is giving you almost uh, 800 plus packages already loaded along with the Python now. So that way it has a rich setup library, which is uh, which is a gift to all the developer now. So I think, uh, uh, yes, it is a free and open source. Most of the library, right? I, I like, you do not require to say that the specific library here now. How are the arguments passed by the value or passed by the reference in the Python? Let me look again, like this is a question that mostly what we do in the case of uh, uh, Java or C, C++, there we think about passed by value and passed by reference. In the case of Python, let me look what happened. In the case of Python, as everything is object, whatever the data we are passing is like a reference only. So that's why you don't, well, don't have the separate thing. You don't require to worry about separate thing here, passed by value and passed by reference. So it is everything reference now. So that is what the, that is the way the, the Python is designed. So it has internally everything managed. You do not require to uh, have a pointers. You do not require to uh, define reference separately because all every, all the, all our objects and all our references by default. 
So yeah, there are several questions here. Uh, I know the Python used for mechanical software, but not understanding how it is supporting. So let me do, uh, it is all up to the, the, the uh, like kind of software they're using based on the software like CAD and CAM. So I have one uh, uh, slide where I have shown like in the case of CAD and CAM programming, Python library is used. So I can, uh, even the GIS uh, library is there for that. We have uh, uh, Arc library is there. So yes, it, all, it is all about library, like GI programming, 3D programming, three-dimensional three programming. So that kind of library is already there in the Python. I hope like you got uh, some answer, but then yes, there's, there's a detailed answer also available in terms of the library's concern. So here, I'm, I, it was in between the break for the question. So I'm again proceeding further for the uh, for the next topic, quickly giving you the function uh, and then object order programming is our major topic for today's session. So I'm coming back to the uh, top, again the practical part here. So let me show you something like about the functions in the Python. I'll show you one quick example of a, a user-defined function, and then I will uh, start with the object in the programming. Uh, okay, I'll show some built-in function also. Some quick example of built-in function. So let me show you first of all user-defined function. So how do you define user-defined function here? You simply write whatever the function name you want. Let's say you want to write df. You want to write uh, something like a Fibonacci sequence. You can write, uh, let's say, argument. Okay, let's say Fibonacci sequence is something like a, a sequence of some number, right? So I'm writing here, here uh, one thing is uh, like a number. And uh, here I've written comment, like this is a Fibonacci sequence. Sequence. You must have seen like Fibonacci sequence is something like this. Uh, it started with zero, then uh, uh, one, then one, then two, then three, then five, right? Uh, then what? Eight. So then 13. So this is the way the sequence is created. So let me write one demo on the Fibonacci sequence as a function example. So how do you do that? I'm just putting it in front of you so that you know like how the, those who are not aware about the Fibonacci sequence. So let me just show it. This is the way the Fibonacci sequence is. And now we want to create, we have to write logic now for this Fibonacci sequence. So here I'm going to think about, okay, how many arguments I should use it now to store the these numbers and create a sequence. So I'm going to write a, the first argument then second argument, and first what I want is a zero, and then I want one as the first thing. Then I want one, two, three, five, eight, eight plus. So how is it happening like five plus three, eight, eight plus five, 13. So then after that, it will be 13 plus eight, like that. So this is the way it should be, right? So now I'm writing a simple program here, and I'm just initializing, like previously also I initialized in the first comma second. So first got value zero, and second got value one. This is what we saw parallel assignment. Now, I wrote Fibonacci sequence in a triple quote string. In Python, let me do it has a single quote string, it has a double quote string, it also has a triple quote string. Triple quote string is like a multi line string. So you can write multiple lines in the triple quote string. That's the, that's the difference now. Now, here I'm going to uh, uh, do what? I'm not, I'll be printing now first. Let's say I just print the first. So it is going to print first. Now I can write a logic like either for loop or I can write a while loop. So let me try with a while loop first. Yes, there's a logic available with the help of for loop also. There's a logic available with the help of for while loop also. So how to do that? Let us try this with the help of while loop first, and then you can try for the for loop also. So while uh, something like uh, you can say, um, okay, second, one of the logic, but this is not the correct one. Second is less than num. Then, uh, print second. I'm just trying a simple logic first and see how, how does it work and then I will modify this logic. So 
So it's all up to your logic. How do you want to write it? Then just say first comma second. Here I'm going to say up now. Uh, second comma first first second. So let us see how does it work, whether it's going to work or not. Why I wrote this? Just to see the, you know, like if I say some number, number is something like it will be a 50 or something. I just want to create a sequence where it it has a sequence like zero first and then uh, then one, then one, then two, then that, that is what I want. So let's see how to call it. I'll just say here, people gonna see uh, as a sequence, that's a function which I define now and I can call it anywhere now. That's the way the function is. And so well indented, you can see the indentation code. Now I'd like to hear, let's say, uh, maybe a 50 and see the result. Oh, we got it. So this is one of the logics to write a Fibonacci sequence. We can see the first one, zero, then one, then one, then one plus one, two here, then two plus one, three, and then that, this way the sequence is created now. Obviously there are multiple logic for writing the Fibonacci sequence. The objective is like you should get the number like where the first one, zero, then the one, and then zero, one, zero plus one like that. So this is the way you can write your own user-defined function. Now, but yes, there are many things in the user-defined function itself. If I do just uh, take the topic like a function, which I took it in the in the previous workshop also, uh, there you can see the basic function also, and then I started the variable argument function and all. But here I just want to show one demo about the function, and then understand like how the function is written. Now, then so what we are going to understand today is a in the today's workshop is a something new that is a built-in function. So there are numerous built-in functions available in the Python. Numerous built-in functions. One of, some of the functions I will take it here. And one of the built-in function which is very powerful is a lambda function. How do you use a lambda in the Python? Some of the guys will be knowing lambda is a mathematical function. Uh, it's like an inverted y. So that is the way the lambda uh, in the Python is. So how do you define lambda as a keyword in the Python? What's the use of the lambda? So lambda is like an anonymous function in the Python and you can create a, your own function using the lambda keyword. So I want to create a function like add. I can simply uh, create a, using the lambda also. So uh, I, the, the user defined way also I can do it and by kind of single line, okay, lambda is a single line uh, user defined function. So you do not, sorry, single line function, right? So using this, you can create your own user-defined function now. How we do it, that let me show you now. So you, it's like an expression. So add, uh, you have the expression, let's say argument one, comma argument two, and the result will be now after colon, and you can just, you do not require write a uh, return here, and simply say argument one plus argument two. My function is, I wrote a function now. In a one line, I just wrote a function. Do you want to test it? Now, for the same in the case of user defined, you say df add, then you write in the in the bracket argument one comma argument two, and then you write return argument one plus argument two. Instead of doing that, I simply say uh, that add equal to. Now, it, the, here this name is not mandatory. It is just like I can use any name, just to you know call it. I am using the name add, but lambda is like not necessary to have the name. It's like a anonymous here. Now, if I define like in you know, a one line. How do I call it? I just say call it by, uh, firstly, let me show what the add is. Add is a lambda function now. Okay, so here what is missing is a colon. Okay, this part. Sorry, it is not. So the problem is like what I did, I did not comment the first section where the folder. So that is very, because this is a cell where you can see interpreters understanding whatever I'm typing. So if I just say uh, one dot and, oh, interpreter don't know what you're writing one dot means. Okay, you have to be very careful by writing on the interpreter. So here you can see, I have just created the add function, which is taking the two argument, one and argument two. So add is a function. So now how do you use it? I can just pass the parameter, whatever I want to pass it. Let's say I want to 50 plus something like uh, 90 and then done. How simple is to write addition of two number? You can try multiplication, you can try any number, that's your choice. So I can 
use a lambda to write my own single line function. This is the, these are the way the built-in functions are used. Now I'll be using this lambda. Why I show this lambda? Because I'll be using this lambda in many cases to write a function in a one-line Excel. So like I'll be using the lambda in a filter function now. We have a function called built-in function called filter. One is one of the powerful functions. Just a second. So how do you define a filter function here? What is filter function? It's a built-in function again, very powerful. So what you do, why the Python is having such function or library? It is to reduce lines of code. They are like a powerful library available in the uh, Python, which allows you to reduce the lines of code. Now, you want to perform uh, some operation on the data structure or in the sequence, you can say. So you want to perform operation on a list or in the case of a tuple or any kind of sequence, and you want to reduce certain uh, you want to filter out some data from that uh, particular sequence. The sequence could be a uh, numeric sequence of list or could be anything. And you need to write a logic where you can uh, filter out certain data from the last sequence. So how do you do that? Using the filter function, I will show you know, one line first. Filter, I will use some built-in uh, function also in this case. Like I'll show one of the built-in functions before using the filter, that is range. Range is one of the powerful built-in function which allows you to create a sequence automatically. You can say this is the start of the range and you can say this is the end of the range. I can print the range by, uh, in the 2.x version, I could directly see the output, but here it shows the, the result which is a iterable object. Here, this, this, uh, if you want to see that, what is the range, I can either iterate it by the list function or by the for loop or by the, so this way you can see this is the list now. It started with the two, it ended with the 24 now. Now this sequence, I want to filter it out. So I'll do that. For that, I will use a filter function now. So filter, I'll also use a lambda function here to write the logic. So filter takes two arguments. The first argument is the function itself. So here I'm going to use a lambda. And in this case, I will write logic in a, using the lambda in such a way that it will filter the sequence. So logic here is like every number which or argument, let's say, uh, is there, I will do that uh, argument modulus to not equal to zero and argument modulus three not equal to zero. So this is what the function I wrote it using the lambda to understand that I'll explain later, but let me show you first in one line, then I'll explain you like what the meaning of this particular statement is. My objective is to reduce the lines of code. So here I'm reducing a lines of code and just writing this entire script in a one line. If you are a very good Python programmer, you can write in one line. So now here I'm writing the range function. Range function say 2 to 25. And let's see the output, something magic. Oh, filter output, because it is also iterable. So let me show like how does to get the result is again to iterate it by the list function now. So again, I'll list of this and see the result. So you got the result, which is in a one line, written a little bit of speed, because you need to know the, how the things are working here now. So let me show like, I wrote one function uh, filter under that two arguments are there. The first one is a function. The second one is a sequence. That's the range. How this is working, let me show this first. This code, I'll show it separately now to understand it. So let me show how does this working. So I'll let, let me write it here as a fun. And you will see like when I say fun of let's say two, what is going to return now? True or false? The return, return is true or false. Let's see, it's saying false. It's a Boolean knowledge. But if I say something like, uh, let's say 20, okay, let's say five what would be the result? It's saying true. So what's happening in this case, this is a function, first function, which is returning true or false. Now filter is doing what? It is returning those value from the sequence where the function is true. That's what the filter function is doing. So wherever uh, in the sequence of two to 24, wherever it just check every, every items of the sequence, check whether this particular uh, number is, you know, 
is having the return value either true or not. If it is true, it is displayed. Otherwise, it's just uh, skipping it. So that is the way the filter function is working. Yes, there are numerous examples of filter also. Uh, we can use it uh, in terms of filtering the sequence. Then there's other uh, sequence built-in function. I'll take it as one more built-in function. I'll take it. Uh, that is a map. They are a little bit, uh, you know, this is a little bit technical now because those who are very little the Python for them, uh, maybe this program, uh, this will be a little bit complex also. So, uh, okay, let me actually see from uh, you guys, like, you know, whether you are getting it or not. Okay, I can see that the editor that you are using is coming from Anaconda. The yes, answer is yes. Okay, now uh, any other question, let me check it. Okay, I can see there's a question like, is Lambda mainly for single line? Answer is yes, is a single line only. Python seems to be similar like to Ruby. Very good, Anand, yes, it looks like a Ruby, uh, but it is a little bit different. Uh, but those who understand the, you can say, Ruby, they can also understand the Python easily. Or those who know the Python, then for them, it is very easy to understand Ruby language. Because both the, both the things, both the languages are object-oriented scripting language. Uh, did you get like uh, the concept part? Any any other question? Let me check it. If any question is there, or uh, is a built-in function? Yes, lambda is a built-in function. Is the lambda itself keyword or build, building the function? Mean, it's a built-in function. Yeah, it's a built-in function. Is a keyword as well as built-in function. Both you can say. Okay, I think I have already answered the, any other questions or. Uh, I can go ahead otherwise. I hope you guys are getting, uh, those who are specifically know the, know the basic Python, uh, uh, they must have understood what you have taken, but those who are very much new to the Python, for them I will recommend uh, to go to the basic of Python first, uh, the first uh, session which I took it, you have to practice that, and then for you to understand this topic will be very easy then. Okay, so I can see that, yeah, most of the participants finding it's uh, interesting, fine, that's fine. So, uh, okay, then we'll go ahead with uh, something very really interesting topic again, because if you find this interesting, then I can again continue with a, a, a very good topic that is object-oriented uh, programming topic quickly. And then, yeah, so let me go ahead with object programming then. I'll share the screen now again. So, uh, let me start the topic of different programming here. Built-in function, the big library is not like just Lambda, it is actually having the other functions. So like Lambda, filter, map, reduce. Reduce is not in the Python 3 now. We have a other sequence also. So I'll just give the quick idea of the programming here now. So we have like a, in object programming, it is like a, it includes the classes and the object. See, till now what we saw is like we started using the uh, using the object, but can we create our own object? The answer is yes, you can create your own object. How do you create your own object? So for that answer is by writing the classes. Now question is like, how do you write your own class? You can write class by the keyword called class itself, and you tell me like what class you want to write it. You want to write class for the bank, class for the uh, car, or whatever it is, whichever the industry, whether it's network industry, you want to write a class for the routers or switches, whatever it is. So maybe a very simple example, maybe I can write for the class for the bank or for the uh, car. So let me write a class as a car now. Very simple because everyone know about the card now. And, and I can simply say pass keyword here. This way I'll tell you like in Python, everything is object and it's very, very simple 
to write object oriented scripting in the python i'm writing very very simple uh, code first and showing like how the object of programming work in the python so here i'm just saying let's say honda is a is a object of this car now so i have created object like honda and now you can just uh, uh, print honda you can see the object is created now you can see without writing any function without writing any method without writing anything you can still create an object because python is a language where even the class is object that's a very interesting part right so even the class is object in the python so here you can see the car whatever you wrote now class car after that what you, generally what happen in other language like c c plus to java class is not object but in this case class is also object so why because everything what you define it is inheriting the some super class now i'll be showing detail like for example if you look at the help of uh, this uh, honda you will see it includes the a big library that is a built in library object it is already inheriting that that's what happening internally which is, which we are not able to see now if, if you see the dir also you will see dir of like honda it has a some built in attribute already available which we have not defined it so this is the way the class is now now let let us write something detail now let me write something detail now here i'm writing the uh, uh, one triple question car class and here in this case i can write a method also df constructor method i'm writing now to initialize the class and uh, here i'm writing the first part the self then first uh, here i'm just uh, writing the so let's say name of the car and uh, maybe the color of the car self is the first parameter uh, if you want to know more you can see the clear uh, basic uh, uh, session which i will cook it about the object programming now this is a letter uh, you know you can say the next level of the car uh, class we are designing now here i'm doing the initialization uh, of a car now so i what is this init init is a built in method uh, for the initialization of the class now so here this is like a constructor in the java and c++ is it a constructor here is a constructor method of the python so where you need to write double underscore in it and double underscore as well. so in the beginning and end uh, we need to write a double underscore now now this i will just print it now to know like how does the initialization work in the python so here i'm just saying say initialization of car class so let us test it now and uh, now let me tell you this method you do not require to call it manually by default in the python case constructor method is already defined you do not require to you know even write it so you can still get object so let me this is what testing it like what happen if you write it writing the init method is like overriding this overriding the built in method in it itself so i'm overriding it and seeing like how does it work so let us test it now and it will execute complete code so let us test it so it is saying that very good now you can see in it missing two required positional argument name and color now i have passed this two argument name and color so what's happening here now the car is asking for two parameter because here this is to initialize the car class so you need to pass this two parameter then only this error will go so i'm not passing self here self is all Passed by the class itself, but then it is not asking for three parameter. Let us see the observe here. It is not asking for the three parameter; asking for only two parameter. Whereas first parameter is what now is a cell. Is like a this pointer. It's a reference to the instance of a class now. So it, it is already defined. So I'm now saying the name of the car is let's say Mobilio, and the uh, and the color is let's say white. is my car so i'm writing that uh, name here mobilio car so let's see okay the object is created now there is no error for you know it is saying initializing initialization of the car class initialization so uh, uh, 
let me print the name also then. I have to write details like, okay, so I'm printing the name and uh, name uh, and uh, color. So how do you print it now? Okay, I can print by one of the ways, this way simply name uh, uh, and, uh, and color. This is one of the way, but then I will recommend something else. I will require, recommend to have a, a percentage S and percentage uh, S for the percentage for the string now. Name is percentage S. And then I will use a, instead of comma, I will use a percentage here. And just seeing the name, comma, color. So let's see how does it work. So I have to finish one more bracket here and see what happened now. Okay, seeing that name is mobilio and color is white. This is what happened now. So I did not call this method manually. It has come, uh, this method has called automatically. This is the way the, the constructor method works here now. But now you can write some more method here. So let me write something more method. That is df and say, uh, say I want to write a method like uh, display method or info method, let's say info method. And again, I write a cell here as the first parameter for every method in the Python. And I will say this is like uh, for information of the car. Now here, I just want to print it. Now what I will do here, <clears throat> instead of uh, printing this statement here, I will try to print here now. Let's see what happens. Uh, instead of printing here, I'll print it here. <clears throat> See what happened, we, just to test it. Now I want to print means I have to say uh, Honda.info. <clears throat> now how does it work? Let's see. Oh, I'm getting error. What is saying? Name is not defined. See, this is something what we are to understand in Python. Previously, I was not getting error when I say Honda.info, the name is not defined. We define name in the init, but not in the info case. It means the name and color, both variable what you see, they are local variable. Now, if you want to share these variable with any other method, you need to define it as object variable. So here I'm going to define object variable. So here saying self.name equal to name. These are the types of variable in the object program. So cell dot name equal name. Here we call it is a uh, object variable. So like that, I, I can define the color also. So here cell dot color. Now in this case, this is so this is a new variable, cell record. So now if I could call it, I would say self dot name, cell dot color. And this is the way it works. Let's see now. Perfect. So it is working. It is saying name is mobilio and color. So this is the way you are, we are able to share. We are able to share what variable. So which variable you can share? Object variable. Object variables are inheritable also. So there are actually, there are four categories of variables in the Python. Local variable, global variable, object variable, and class variable. So local variable is like now, the name and color both are local variables. So the scope is local, so you can just have a scope inside the function only. Object variable, the scope is something inside the class, or even it is inheritable. Means you can share it. So available to the object now. The third one, which I'll show you here, is a class variable. So let's say the car, car is having the, some uh, unique code, then that could be chassis number. Chassis number equal to, let's say, starting with zero. So this variable, which is defined below the class, is called class variable. Okay, so now here, what I'll do in this case, uh, I'll test it, how does it work? So class variable, we generally call by the class name itself. So we are having the scope, like you can call by the class name as well as by the object. So I'm going to do that car dot chassis underscore number. 
let me check it, chassis underscore number plus equal to one. I'll just initialize it every time. I would like to print also. I can print by using the self also, I can print by car also. That's fine, that is available. Chassis underscore number. So let's see what happened. Now here we can create a for every object what happened, let's see. So I will, I'll be creating the multiple object now to test it. It's going to be unique number for all the objects. So let's see what happened now. For Honda, then Honda one, then Honda two, Honda, yeah, like that you can have. So maybe you have a different color now, or red, black, something like that. So let's see what happens when we are creating the, uh, the object variable, which has to be unique. See, uh, this is our class variable. Now you can see what happened. You got a unique number for every every Honda uh, uh, type also. You can see there's a, uh, the serial number what you see. Here I'll write uh, the chassis number other than initialization of the class. So I will say here, this is like, uh, because this, this way it will be very easy for you to understand. Chassis number. Okay, so this is the way you can have a unique number for all the car, and this is what we want. So if you want to have unique, this is all automation we did now. Here we did not uh, write for every every method or like you know that it should increment or something like this. Is all like static number. This is like chassis number is like a, a static variable in the Java and C++. So yes, there's a lot of things can be done in the case of object programming. This this is a little bit uh, challenging for those who are newcomer here. But those who know there is an object of programming in the, some other language like Java and C++, they can easily understand what I'm trying to show you. Yes, we need to be very, very careful when adding the script in the Python because the code need to be well indented. You can see that my while I'm typing, those who are typing uh, along with me or some other guys, they must be trying. For them, if you are not even, let's say, if you're not giving the proper space here, you will get error here. So have to be very, very careful while typing the Python script now. Now this class, which I written car, I can inherit somewhere else. So I will just create one more class here. That is a, a deluxe car. I'll just show like how does the inheritance work. And then uh, this way you get the idea like object only programming in more better way. So let me show you that. So here I'm going to use a, you know, a deluxe car. So writing the one more class that is a deluxe car, which is like to invite. So when is your object of programming? We have what? We have some features. Like what are the features? We have polymorphism feature. We have inheritance features. We have overriding, overloading, and many more things. So one of the most powerful features in object programming is called inheritance. So what is inheritance means? It is all about reusability of whatever you saw. So we already have some feature. Let's say defining the class car. And you want to reuse it in another class and then add some new feature. In that case, we go for the inheritance now. So here I'm doing what deluxe car of this uh, car. I'm inheriting the feature from the car. And uh, uh, this is what we say inheritance. So this is like a deluxe car. And here I'm going to uh, simply say, okay, I don't recall how a much code, I'll just test it. And add one more uh, method here. That is, uh, uh, maybe I can say info D uh, and having the self saying that this is a uh, direct info. So printing here, deluxe info car. Whatever. So just to add one more method, other than that, what are the methods already available? And now this time I'll create a deluxe car, object of deluxe car. So this is what we have deluxe car now. Let's see how does it work. So we have a, already a feature coming from the car, and some new feature will be there now. Let's see how does it works. So you can see all the what are the features are there in the car is are available to the deluxe car. In addition to that, now if you want to test it, like deluxe car is also having a one more feature available other than what are the feature already defined, 
and that is uh, I'm just calling in the input uh, D here. Sorry, I wrote a mistake here. Input D, please. Input D. And you can see the one more feature, which I, is a dealer's car. So this is the way inheritance works in the Python. Here is very, very simple compared to, compared to other languages. Yes, there are many more features available, like how to do overriding in the Python. Yes, with, by writing the same method, you can override and understand the, how overriding works in the Python. So this was like to give the quick idea about how object-oriented programming works in the Python. So let me actually uh, see the questions now once again. Okay, so it is saying that a uh, function with double underscore is a must for override or, okay, good question. Let me do like, uh, it's not like that. Overriding is something like, you know, available uh, as a, as a, for the user defined overriding and there's a built-in override. Now, the init method is built-in function in this case of Python. As it is a built-in function, uh, we, we are using the built-in parameter, you know, like, it's by default is there. So like double underscore init is a built-in method available in the Python. Whereas you can override by using the, your own uh, method also, like you are the a class uh, and then under, under that you are writing the deluxe star now. So if you write one more times, uh, let's say info, that will be like overriding of the previous uh, class info in that case. So next question is what does the pass and self stand for? Pass is a keyword which does nothing. So self is something else and pass is something else. They're not same. See, pass is like, it is just to avoid the syntax error, you can use a pass. Whereas self is something like a, like a this pointer in the Java or C++, it is a reference to the instance of class. Self is not a keyword, whereas a, this is a keyword in the case of Java and others. It's like a first parameter to the every method. So here what happens, it is to it is used only for the reference purpose only. Yeah, so it could be anything, but then for the naming convention, we are using the self only. Any other question I can see? Uh, yeah, I think these are the questions which were there. So I, I generally check in between like if any questions are there. Now, I hope you guys understood like what are the topic I just wanted to quickly look at, show you like, you know, that how we can write a function, how we can write a, a built, how, can, how we can use the built-in functions, even uh, uh, how we can write your own classes. And I have shown like even the, those who are already are having the knowledge of Python, they can also use that things. Okay, there are some questions like, are there any scope definition like public, private, kind? Okay, that's a very good question again. Uh, let me tell you in the Python case, by, uh, we do not require to define here as a public, private, and protected keyword. But yes, we have a way of writing the code. So there's a way of writing that we can make some data as a private by using the double underscore in the beginning. Uh, but then we don't use a keyword like public, private, protected in the Python. That is the way the Python is. So uh, yeah, there are way of writing. Now, if you want to hide the code, some something which you do not want to overwrite, that is possible in the Python. But there are no keyword as such. Uh, how do you define global variable is one of the very good question. Definitely global keyword is defined by the keyword called global itself. So here, a very good question it has come. Let's say, for example, I want to define a global variable here so I can, okay, let, I think the screen is not shared, so let me show that first. So in this case, let's say I want to define the global. I, I can define the global keyword anywhere in the function also, like let's say I want to change the scope or inside the method so that uh, I, I change the scope. Like for example, I say global and the uh, variable could be uh, company. Now this company, uh, whatever the keyword I use as a, as a global variable, and then I can define the value as a company equal to, let's say, uh, GKGCS. Now, this variable will be available to every outside the, you know, outside the uh, method, outside the class, is open to everyone, so available to everyone. So I can simply print everywhere I can use it. Now, I want to say print uh, company now. I use a lowercase, uppercase. I use a I love lowercase only, right? So I will just print company now, see what happens. So I do not require to call it by object now. So this is available. So 
Whereas if you, if I try to print name, it won't be because name is a local variable. So this is the way the global variable is used here. So I hope I answer the question now. Great. So I hope like uh, most of you understood like the global. It's a very good question. Like most of the times, you know, this kind of questions are asked in the interview also. Uh, and yes, you need to know the thorough about the Python for that. Here, this was the quick overview about the some advanced feature of Python. But yes, we will have some more uh, uh, workshop for advanced uh, uh, topic on the object programming again, as well as uh, a topic like regular expression and uh, uh, and the file handling and advanced topic that I will also I'll be covering in the next workshop. So uh, I I will request all of you to you know watch my previous uh, workshops, uh, whatever I have taken as a Python for everyone. And uh, this workshop will give you the, some more addition to the what we saw in the previous workshop. And uh, the next workshop, which I'll be coming up, where I will have some more advanced topics, like uh, the inheritance uh, in a more details with our super keywords, as well as the, as well as the topic like file handling in advanced topics and regular expression, like using the models. So that way you will understand the, from advanced feature by so if uh, if you attend all the workshop you will not require to go for any any python course here i'm covering the all the course uh, entire python course in the workshop series only so i'll be coming soon with uh, the next uh, workshop uh, as if you are uh, i hope like you're understanding whatever i have taken it or uh, any other question i will just definitely try to take the questions Or uh, you need some uh, because I can uh, talk about the, some applications, or you, you can ask me about the careers. Yes, I can discuss about it. If you have questions like, do you want to know the uh, applications of the Python? Then I can take it right away because I have to fit in the last session also. Or, or, or uh, maybe I can take it offline now. That part. Any, or you like to like, uh, or we can continue in the next session, next workshop. Okay, so my question to you now, I'm just launching the poll here. Uh, just answer it quickly. That Python is, and you have the options available, you have multiple choice. I hope the, let us, let me see like how many guys understand the what Python is now. And the poll is already started. I could see the result now, let's see. Someone is saying that Python is scripting, someone is saying programming, someone is saying object-oriented programming, and someone is saying object-oriented scripting language. Wow, great. Everybody is answering it. Great. And majority is very good majority here. The majority is saying that Python is object-oriented in language. So that's a great, all of you are like those who are major. So let me know, major answer is object, but then yes, Python is having the, the, the is, is having the feature of scripting language, is having the feature of programming language, is also having the feature of object oriented programming language. And that's why I say it is a high level object oriented scripting language. When you say scripting language, it, it has internally programming also. We do not. So these all features are already there as a combined together. We say object or descriptive language. So already most of you guys uh, given the answer. So all of you are correct here in all the way because that's why it's a multiple choice. That's great. So now the one more question. So I will end the poll here. The next question is uh, again like you have to answer it now. What is class here? So let me see your answer. What is class? I already started this uh, again. You have multiple choice. In this case, multiple choices there. Okay, so class is having a great. Uh, most of you are saying like someone is saying object, someone is saying data structure also. Great. And let's see like the response. I'm waiting for everyone response because I wanted to make you clear like what exactly it is. And I purposefully given the question where you have. You don't have one single answer here. You have a multiple answer in this case. Yeah, and uh, it's progressing well, like almost 10 of you already given the answer also. 
already given the answer. Very really good. Yeah, I can see the majority of you are saying that class is blueprint, and you are right. Yes, class is a blueprint. But let me tell you, yeah, that's true. But it is like, you know, sometimes we say it is a template, meaning is same. These are the various terminology. Uh, in the Python case, class is object also. Okay, but then if you ask the generic way, class is not object, but in the Python case, class is object also. But then if I have to say, in a more uh, you know detailed way, so class is a blueprint. So that's a, that's the a correct answer. Most of you are already given as the blueprint as a, the 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 choice for you can say for multi all the uh, all the attendees here. Maximum attendees is saying the class is a blueprint here. So I'm again. So I hope you understood now the the what the class is now. So that's correct answer. Class is a blueprint, or you can say even the sometimes you template present say blueprint is a or is the right way to say about our class. So it includes the data and method together. So that's it for the today's session. Uh, if anything else is there, I can again, uh, I want you to, you know, look at the, like the, our uh, the update on the, the YouTube channel. You can please subscribe and the, uh, like our YouTube channel so that we'll continue our uh, Python series for the, all the developers as well as for the data scientists. I have planned for the Python for everyone. So where I'll be covering the uh, the major part, like you know, for the data science people, for the network engineer, for the programmer, for the banking people. So various uh, things which are there, I'll be covering in the Python. So because uh, also I want you to uh, look at my the previous video where I have covered the career in the Python. There I have discussed about what are the careers are there in the Python, what are the applications are in the Python. So you can look at the the benefits of the Python, which are discussed in the case of the previous video. So I want you to look at the previous video and see it completely because there is a video of almost three hours, which covers all this topic, which uh, which include the, even the limitations of the Python, which I have already taken there. Uh, and also I have covered the, the applications, which include the web applications, GUI applications, console-based application, software development application, scientific and numeric application, business application, audio video based application, enterprise application, image processing application, game development, machine learning. There are so much of scope is there. So many applications are in there. And one of the powerful applications which I have discussed there is like about Instagram. This is the application which is developed using the Django. You know like how the development happened in the Instagram and this complete company uh, is having the billions of users. And this is the application which is developed. So as an entrepreneur, you can think about developing such application. And someone asked me, like, you know, how you can use the Python. Uh, I told, like, in the 3D CAD application in the mechanical industry, available in the uh, Python. So, yes, that is also that also I discussed in the previous video. So, this is like the growth of Instagram. Let me know the company, the Instagram development, like number of users uh, connected in a in a ten, in a in a one decade, you can say. In a decade, you can see the billions of users are managed. Uh, uh, the monthly, you know, by Instagram. And this is such application which is developed in the Django. Django is the uh, one of the fastest framework. And I will be taking the session on Django also, uh, uh, maybe uh, in the in the series of workshop here. I hope you like this workshop and uh, you will also love to know more about this Python and other various applications like Django and then data science and machine learning. So if you like it, please subscribe our channel so that I can continue on, uh, you know, sharing the knowledge, and this will be not, this knowledge will be freely available for everyone. So, any question or comment, please write uh, your comment about whether you like this session or not, whether you want me to continue such session for all of you guys or not. You just write the comment there on the YouTube channel also.